Greetings. Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. Uh, my name is Brendan, and uh, this is my first time streaming. I've never streamed before. Before, uh, I definitely didn't stream uh, one one time already this year, uh, and uh, um, wait, hang on. I've streamed hundreds of times, uh, and I used to stream all the time, but hey, I'm back. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> I, I was glad to see some people already chatting uh, in our chat room over there on the side. Uh, if you are someone that is new to the channel, welcome. Uh, we are a community of developers uh, who's uh, we sort of built around the stream, which means that it's a little bit of a problem when the host of the stream uh, doesn't stream for a while. Uh, so, uh, I will jump into our project, uh, cover a couple of things that I figure I'll get out of the way and mention for people. Uh, so, first off, uh, my name is Brendan. Uh, I am a programmer who uh, learned to code in, I don't know, like mid to late 90s. Uh, I've been programming in a variety of languages over that time frame. Uh, right now, my current favorites are still, uh, I do most of my work in C Sharp and JavaScript. Uh, I like the languages. They're very good. Uh, I've done a lot of Python in the past, a lot of C++ in the past, though both of, uh, both of those for large projects has been a while. Um, you know, I obviously work with Java and other things like that. I'm an independent consultant, so uh, I end up working with whatever technology stack, whatever stuff my clients want to use. Uh, so if they want to build stuff in C Sharp, I use C Sharp. If they want Java, I build Java. Um, and by build, I sometimes am the one writing the code, but a lot of times I'm also the one mentoring the developers on a team. Uh, so, yes, Codebase Alpha, the 1890s. I am much older than I look. <laughs> uh, so, a couple of other things I do want to get out of the way. Uh, for anyone that is wondering why I disappeared, it is a combination of, uh, well, um, work takes a bunch of my time. And then the other one is uh, I have uh, another kid that is not yet one uh, that, um, let's just say that babies can sometimes take a lot of your time. Uh, so <laughs> so yay, yay for increased family size, uh, nay for lack of sleep and such. Uh, but anyway, um, I want to get started with some code today. Uh, so there's some stuff that I've been wanting to build. And um, it's mainly for uh, some of our other projects. So we have a variety of projects. Thank you, Codebase Alpha, uh, that we work here, work on here on the stream. So some of the things we work on are um, we work, we like working on uh, chat interactive stuff. So things where our chat can type commands and other things like that. Uh, something that has been on our back burner for a long time is the idea of building an extension for Twitch. Uh, we have not started that, uh, and I would like to get into that at some point. Um, most of the time, we just like having fun with code and chatting about stuff. Uh, so if if that sounds fun to you, then welcome. We're glad to have you here. Uh, you'll notice that the color of uh, my stream is currently yellow. That's because someone typed the word yellow into chat. I think it's Codebase Alpha. And uh, you can type in any color you want, whether it's a hex code or a named color, uh, and it will change to that, and those lights just kind of blank a little bit. So if someone chooses a color that doesn't look nice, that's fine. Change it to something else. Um, and the, the best part is that these colors, because there's so little of them, it really doesn't get too bad, even if you choose something that's super bright. Okay. Um, oh, and uh, by the way, I should mention that the color control thing that, that uh, they're doing with that is obviously something we built on stream at one point. Um, it's a standalone application that we were just like, yeah, we'll just build a thing that just does this. You type in color codes and it'll pass that value on to an overlay and then you can build any overlay you want. And then I built this overlay. Okay, so project. Let's write some code. So I mentioned that I want to uh, wrap up some of our projects. So one of the things we built here is a program called Interactive 7. And Interactive 7 is not what I'm going to build today. Um, Interactive 7 mostly works. Um, we have uh, a reasonable amount of uh, private uh, of testers that are just using it right now for us. We haven't like released like a public, hey, you know, everybody should use this version. Uh, good try, Minar. Um, and the um, the 
partial reason is that we want to make it a little bit more user friendly. So um, what Interactive 7 does is it is a program we built for Final Fantasy 7 streamers. So someone will play that game and their chat can uh, essentially take over the game in a lot of ways. So they control the menu colors. They can uh, bid with their bits on uh, what they think the player's characters' names should be. Uh, they can apply status effects to the characters while they're in combat. Uh, they can uh, change the equipment of the characters. They can remove items. They can change their materia. They can, they can add items. They can remove items. They can take money away. They can give money. Uh, so basically, they have a lot of ways of manipulating the game. Uh, and I've built some other ones uh, as well that uh, are like time-based and holding different things. So for example, I can make it so that the, um, the, the player does not receive any rewards after they finish a battle in combat. So <laughs> you could just be like, no, no rewards for you. You get no benefit for this. You get no experience. You get no items. You get no money. Like there's no benefit to winning a battle. Uh, and then in, in, on top of that, you can also make it so that they get battles every few steps. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do to just, you know, wreck the streamer's day, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and part of the reason why it's fun uh, is we tied it to uh, essentially users can get the money either by the money that the user, the, the, the chatter uh, uses in order to... Um, affect the game, they get that money either because the streamer sent it to them, uh, or a moderator sent it to them, or they can just straight buy it by using uh, essentially bits and cheering on Twitch. Uh, so the idea with that is that the streamer can essentially get paid to suffer through that stuff. Uh, and the streamer gets to choose what all the values and what all the costs are of things, so anything that's really bad, they're just going to set the value up really high, so uh, it works out nicely. Um, we have a bunch of people that use it and uh, really enjoy it, and it's a nice way of sort of helping the uh, overall community with that. So what I want to build here is, as it mentions in that box, uh, a site, an API, and a Twitch extension. So the idea being, I want to build a site where they will register uh, to be able to, you know, essentially run the program. Um, I want to change up how it works so that the users don't have to type chat commands, although I'm still probably going to let them type chat commands. It's that some manipulations will work much better with a UI, and thus having a chat command is not an ideal way to use it. Uh, hey, Stool Penner. Uh, also, welcome, everyone. Uh, if I didn't say hi to you in chat, greetings, hello, welcome. Um, and so the idea is... If you're going to manipulate the inventory of a character, their currently equipped stuff, their items, their materia, uh, all of these sorts of things, that's not something we can really do. For, I mean, we you could type in a command, and I'll do an example. You'll see it on the side there. You could say, like, um, you know, cloud, materia, you know, uh, weapon, zero... And then, like, uh, maybe we say it's restore or something like that. And that says, like, change Cloud's materia in weapon slot zero to restore materia is, like, <laughs> these things get really messy and you got to figure it out. And, like, oh, what if what if there isn't a zero slot? And, you know, like, they can't keep, you know, like, the user can't really keep track of what the situation is. So, no, we're not going to go down that route. I get way too messy with, with you know, text. Uh, what would be a lot nicer is if we just literally gave them a UI that we are refreshing every once in a while so that they're less likely to have, you know, the oops, it wasn't wasn't correct for what they were seeing. Uh, and we can adjust on their screen then, like, what they're picking from. Uh, so then if they want to change it and say, like, equip uh, a restore into the first slot of the weapon of Cloud, they can do that, and they'll just pick that from the interface. Um, We'll have to figure out eventually what we want to do with, like, oh, the, the material went away before you managed to do it, or maybe um, maybe someone changed the weapon and there is no zero slot anymore. Uh, so these sorts of things we'll have to figure out at, at some point. Um, and the idea is that the actions you send... Uh, so we're going to end up having to do, like, a CQRS-based um, thing, because um, essentially what's going to happen is they're going to send it to us, and we're going to say, hey, yeah, we got it, but 
we can't immediately say whether or not we managed to do it because that information has to go up to our API. So here, here's the idea. On the extension, you're going to choose your options. That has to talk to our API. Our API has to be somewhere on the web. We're not going to have the browser talk directly to the streamer's computer. That'd be like a giant security risk. Uh, so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go out to a web API that we're going to set up. Uh, and then that web API is going to uh, be connected to by the streamer. And so when a user manipulates something, the streamer's computer is going to find out about it, attempt to make the change. If it successfully makes the change in the game, we're going to send that message a confirmation back up to the server. So the API is going to receive that and then send it back down to the browser, letting that user know, hey, you successfully made the change. Congratulations. Um, and because everyone else is getting these updates as well, in our periodic message just about what the current state of things are, um, we will send it up uh, to the uh, essentially everybody that is currently looking at that screen. So that's the theory uh, for how this will work. How it works in practice, we'll figure out. Okay, so uh, I created a new... Uh, GitHub repository here. Uh, for now, I'm just calling it Game Oversight. I don't really have a much better name just yet. Um, if you have suggestions for a name for what this could be, because I'm also like, I don't want this to only tie to uh, Final Fantasy VII right now. That's the only game that we are connected to. Uh, but I figure we should be able to connect it to any others. And I've done some work to make it connect to the others. Uh... <clears throat> Uh, you were wondering, so Fuel Snable, you asked a question. You were wondering, is there a way to make Visual Studio not reformat a specific file? Could you have a comment that instructs VS not to touch the formatting? I don't know if there's a way to tell it to not do that. I know how to tell it to change them. Uh, I know how to tell it to change it all the time. Uh, and I know how to tell it uh, to, to mess with it like a specific, like, you know, on command. Uh, but I don't know if there's a way to say never do it to this file. Um, it seems like a feature that should exist. Um, I would try hitting one of the, the PMs about it. Okay, so here's what I've created so far. We have a solution file, it is empty. It is this, uh, and there is uh, our GitHub desktop. And you'll see that all we've done so far is created a solution file inside of a source folder. So I wanna keep all the source together. Uh, I figured there'll probably be like um, source, but they're also going to be like instructions and other things like that. So I like having a source file. <laughs> Hands off VS. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice code base alpha. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so uh, for now, I'm going to go straight into the main branch because that's what I do for like my first like set up the project thing. And then once I've got a basic project set up, then I usually dive into a branch for anything further. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the solution this way. Um, so we'll just call it uh, blank solution. Created blank solution. We'll commit that straight into the main and push it up. <clears throat> um, at some point, I'm going to add a build to this, but I'm not going to start there. Uh, so we will have a GitHub action that does the build. OK. Next thing we need to do is add in a new project. Uh, for this, I want to do uh, a web API, an ASP.NET Core web API. Now, um, the astute person uh, that goes into Visual Studio is going to immediately notice a problem. Um, there's a naming confusion thing that's in here that I want to alert everyone to. ASP.NET Core is still called ASP.NET Core, despite the fact that the word core has been has been dropped from .NET Core 5, you know, from .NET 5. Instead of calling it .NET Core 5, it's just .NET 5. But we still, for ASP.NET, call it core because there is a distinction in the project type that we need to draw, and they can't just chop because they weren't ASP. They didn't really go by ASP.NET framework before. They were ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core, so they can't do the same trick everybody else did of just, oh, just cut off the qualifier at the, the, the end. It's like, no, they can't do it. So they have to still be called Core. <clears throat> okay. So this one, uh, 
I should I should specify a couple of things. I'm going to start with the site, and then we'll build the API. So the site is where the user is going to go to essentially log in and create like their account that they can connect to with. Uh, well, I'm going to say Interactive Seven for now. That will talk to the server. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is create a site where they can log in and register uh, as a user. <clears throat> Exactly. They can't even call it ASP.NET 5 because they already <laughs> like they already did that. It's like they've lost all chance with the naming. A uh, bit of difference for since <clears throat> Oh, Phil Snell, you're back in .NET land. Fun stuff. Yes, a lot of Blazor gets used. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, ASP. Okay. Uh so I'm gonna call this project. Uh, do I want to call it view? This is like um, maybe public site, and the fact that it's view won't we won't even put in here. Uh, I'm still planning on putting this in in like as a view project. So, hey, yes, the the electric boogaloo uh, ASP.NET five plus plus, yes. Smart ASCII, you can you can definitely be on the naming team at Microsoft with that. Okay, so we're gonna create this. We're gonna do a .NET, .NET Core five project, which is like the current version. Which a um, couple of warnings on this. So we are gonna do .NET five zero. However, uh, what that does mean is that this is not a long term support build. So at some point, I'm gonna need to update this to five point one, uh, which I don't have here yet. <coughs> Oh, uh, if if you're really taking off, have a good one, Crimson Green. If if you're just kidding, then that's that, that's fine too. Um, so for now, I'm not going to worry about authentication. Uh, we can start adding that once we get the project going. So I'm going to leave that out. Um, I like that they have a new version where they like in the template where they just toss Swagger in to begin with. So I'm going to leave it in there and plan to remove Swagger when we go public. But I really do like Swagger. Uh, during development, because it makes things a lot easier to use. Yeah, so um, I I do get to work with Vue on a on a pretty regular basis. Uh, Smart ASCII, I do like it because um, some of my clients I'm able to get to work with Vue. Um, I've also like not long ago I was working on uh, an Angular project also, but you know you work with. They all do the same thing. React, Angular, Vue, like, they solve the problem. <clears throat> yeah. They they all solve the problem. They they do the... They, they... Essentially, at the end of the day, all those things are supposed to be doing is, like... It's like, okay, yeah, you can bind stuff to HTML, and it's a... Uh, framework for enca encapsulating some code and navigation and stuff. It's like, do they do more than that? Yes. But like, that's like the core of what we're using them for is like binding values and such so that we're not like, you know, on clicking and, and on loading to set all of our values. And yes, so uh, the funny thing uh, that you comment there, Smart Ask, about view being easier to grasp, that's actually why I... Um, when we first started using Vue here on the stream, uh, I suggested we use Vue for some things because it was really easy to pick up. I recommend it to a lot of clients for that reason also, because, oh, you have a team that doesn't know React, Angular, or Vue. Vue is really easy to get started with. Um, probably much like, like, yeah, there are more people using the other two, but if you just want to hit the ground running, there are a lot of people using Vue, so good choice. Um, the the key with any technology choice is you need to be over a threshold of users where you're going to be able to find other people that know it. And it definitely is above that point. You think, uh, yes, exactly. Yep, Vue has a less steep learning curve. So nice and easy to bring people on. Uh, okay, so here's basic project. Let's go ahead and set this as uh, the startup project. Uh, pro tip for anybody, uh, if you are going to ever create any project ever in Visual Studio or any other technology or anything like that, don't forget first step is run it. Because if by some chance something got borked on my machine or in Visual Studio or something, 
before I go and make a whole bunch of other changes, I think it would be an I think it'd be a good idea to just check this and say, hey, did this work? Okay, so we chose to have uh, so we, one of the checkboxes we left checked is what it told it to include Swagger. So that's why we have this interface here. Uh, we built an API project. So that means that we have a button to get a weather forecast and that's what that does. So it comes back with current time, temperature. Uh, wow, it's cold. Either way, the point being, uh, it looks like it worked. <laughs> no code base alpha. The funny thing is, the first step is not to delete all the generated code. The first step is absolutely to run it, and then you delete all the generated code. Uh, and the reason why is, if you delete too much, then you end up being looking like an idiot, and you go and create the project again, because you can't figure out what you did. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yep, that, that is the one. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. First off, we're going to make a branch now. Uh, let's call it um, public site. So our feature branch is going to be me working on the public site. So hence the name. We're going to bring these changes with us when we switch branches. Um, we'll go ahead and publish the branch so it's out on GitHub also. And then once we've done that, uh, I want to commit this first set of stuff and then do the step that uh, Codebase Alpha was talking about, uh, which is to get rid of all of the generated stuff that we don't want. Because uh, while, I, while I, I really do appreciate that the weather forecast is in the API project, because you want to be able to do the test I just did, which is essentially the hey this site really runs right and works and it's connected which is essentially what that checked what it didn't check is anything like is uh, is routing beyond being able to go to a, a basic swagger page there who knows um oh yes smart ascii okay sorry i didn't explain swagger um which is totally on me yes if you don't know what swagger is um it is uh, essentially an awesome framework that just kind of uh puts a front end on an API. Uh, so it, it is exactly what Smart ASCII described it as. It's kind of like having a Postman interface already there and defined on your project, which is what that is. So let me let me run it again just so I can show you that because it's, it's neat. So if you take a look, it is not only telling me, it's not, not only like gives me the ability to call the get on here. So like... I can run this, it'll run it, sends that out, comes back with some values, uh, but it will also uh, show you all the data about the schema. So look, it says I'm going to get back a date that is, apparently it's going to be a string, uh, and we're going to have an int and some strings. So that's what it's going to come back as, I assume, in my JSON formatting uh, is the way it's displaying it here. Uh, a couple of other things about it, so see... Because the object, once it's JSON, is just a string, that's what we have here. Uh, on the server side, I'm sure that is a, a, uh, a standard date time object in C Sharp, but it just puts this on here. Uh, and if you're wondering, well, how much code does it take? Do you have to define those things? And the funny thing is, no. No, you don't. It just kind of looks at it and just says, here's what it is. Because if we take a look at the API controller itself, you'll see there's nothing here. Hey, Brutal Swede, thank you very much for uh, <laughs> resubbing to the channel. Uh, yes, it's good to be back. Uh, my hair is only slightly crazy. Uh, so, you'll notice it's just a standard get, and really the place that it defined that structure is this. So, like, the fact that it returns a weather forecast is how it knows. And then it just goes and looks at the weather forecast and goes, okay, yeah, what's that going to return? Uh, so if we look at the startup, you'll see where it defined that. And here it is. Add swagger <laughs> generation. Uh, and it's just going to say, yep, go ahead and do that. Uh, for Ours is just called like public site v1. So that's like the name of this API version. Uh, and you'll see that it adds this right here. So that's just defining here's the swagger endpoint. So, yep. 
Uh, should Again, should only do it for development here, uh, but I do want to get rid of it entirely just uh, before we release a public version. Just by some chance something makes us think we are in development, I prefer not even having the code for that stuff uh, out in production if we can avoid it uh, for things that could be a problem. Yeah, see, just app use swagger and then use the UI uh, to have an endpoint on there. Uh, my hair, crazy? No way. <laughs> That's true. I, my, my hair is nothing compared to a lot of people out there. Uh, <clears throat> I did some damage. <laughs> See, what Codebase Alpha is talking about is exactly what I what I want to avoid having. Um, is the like you you never want to accidentally uh, leave Swagger or many other uh, helpful development tools uh, in the production site unsecured. Uh, so some companies will have this kind of stuff out there but it's like in some way secured so you have to be authenticated and authorized blah 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 in order to be able to do it <laughs> which is fine uh and you can go that route uh the safest one is don't even have it there at all because <laughs> uh while someone can figure out your api it's nicer to not just hand them the entire thing of like here's all the here's every every single command we could take like yeah, it's it's nicer if they have to work to find it. That being said, they can work to find it, but it's nicer if you just dodge that bullet because some of them you can't find unless you're already authenticated and other things like that. So anyway, uh, so yeah, that's all that's required for that. Uh, so before we go on, let's commit. So I always do commit the sample stuff, which uh, could be someone's going to freak out about, but I do. Uh, I, I commit it and then I remove it. Um, adding the, uh, adding, uh, API, API template. Yeah, created API, um, adding an API a project. Yeah, we'll say API project. And if you're wondering, Brendan, why are you doing an API project? Well, the reason is because we're actually going to do a view site, which means that we don't really need to have all like the views and controllers and stuff. What we do need, however, is um, an API for view to talk to. So uh, my plan is to have the view be included in this project. There's a couple of ways you can do things. You can either do an API and a and like a static, like just blank site. Um, both are good approaches. Uh, I like both of them, depending on the circumstances. Uh, but my thought was, if I encapsulate the, the whole public site and then have a separate API, it's very clear which one's the API getting talked to by the extension and which one is the public site that people log into. <clears throat> All right, hopefully I managed to get that muted so you didn't hear me coughing. Um, no, no, don't worry, I don't have that. I just dry throat. Um. <clears throat> uh. API keys, you just keep. All right, anything on uh, use... Security makes the API harder to use. I've been fiddling around with Azure API management. Uh... Uh, yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, coughing on a stream is a good way to not infect anyone else. Um, you just mute it and then it doesn't send the germs through. <clears throat> okay. Uh, add the API project. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, uh, the part that Codebase Alpha was alluding to is let's get rid of all the bits of this that we don't want. So first off, there is a weather forecast controller. I don't want a weather forecast controller. We're not going to be doing any weather forecasting on this project. Um, that being said, I do want to have a controller. So I'm actually just going to steal this one because it's here. Do I want a logger? Sure, I'll take a logger. Now, the controller I want to have first is a ping controller. And you might say, that's a useless controller. And I agree, it is a useless controller. However, I like to have one because um, in many ways, I am a coward about this sort of thing. 
Um, and I like to just have a controller that will return something. You know what? We're going to go with, we're going to do this. We're doing this. Okay. Um, what do we want to return? Let's say, uh, on and the time. No, not too too long time string. It's not the worst. Yeah, so ping is gonna return pong and a and a time. Um exactly fuel snable. Yes, I always like to have a, a controller that and, and the funny thing being that if you're actually doing a health check, like a like a you know, I want to have a health check on my program. You might have more than a ping controller that you know actually makes sure something more is um is actually available there. But the reason I like to have just a very simple just ping it returns a string thing and it's like a ping pong it does no logic doesn't go anywhere um, is if this fails something went really really wrong if your ping controller can't run. So. I'm going to remove its logger even. We're going to go dead simple. This thing requires nothing. Okay. Ping controller is an API controller. Its route is the controller name, which means it's going to be slash ping. So it's going to, it should be, should be slash ping. We'll see where it ends up. Uh, I may have to adjust this to be like API slash ping. Uh, I forget. Uh, but we'll look into that. Uh, okay, so next up, it created this weather forecast little class here. This is no longer getting used because we got rid of the weather forecast controller. So let's get rid of that. Uh, this needs to get renamed to ping controller. Now, even though I used the same file for that, um, GitHub is not going to recognize these as being the same thing. Uh, Void come Phil, welcome. Greetings. Good evening to you as well. Uh, Eyes on B. Hey, greetings. Uh, so that should work. Let's go ahead and test it with our ping controller. So again, we have Swagger installed. So yep, there's ping. We run it and it comes back with response of uh, where, where's my response? Pong at 5.17 p.m. UTC. That looks about right. <laughs> Go Base Alpha! Thanks very much for subscribing to the stream. Oh, Smart ASCII gifted a sub to Code Base Alpha. See, I read the wrong thing. Well, thank you, Smart ASCII. Uh, which now makes me wonder. Smart ASCII. Why is it not showing you as a streamer, as a as a as a subscriber? Well, either way, you see, this is the this is the cost of um of not streaming for like uh four months, and then even before that, like another four months, uh, is uh even even your own mods aren't subscribed to your stream anymore, which totally makes sense. I wasn't around, so you shouldn't. Um. Okay. So, uh, public site v1, yep, okay, that works. So, ping controller. Uh, what other controllers are we going to need? You're not hearing alert sounds. I will fix that. Really? Do you hear the music now? You don't hear the light background music? Is it too quiet? <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Uh,
Now the question is, can I replay that? And now do you hear it? Look, I'm pretend I'm not headbanging though, because I already did that once. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so the the point of the music being very quiet, smart ASCII, is that uh, it it's not supposed to be um, uh, irritating to Phil as it seems to be. Uh, so just nice light background music. So there is something there, but it's not uh, not overpowering. Okay, so we've got one of those. Next thing that we need to get set up is the uh, view project. So in order to make that work, we are going to need to get a, a essentially a client app folder in here. Now, I need to go look something up because I don't remember the view CLI command. Because uh, I only do this when I create new projects. Um, What is the command? What is the command? So, uh, for any of you that don't know, uh, view has a command line, which I guess I'll toss this on the screen. Uh, and essentially what it lets you do, um, once you have uh, a... Uh, so you're gonna run Node and everything like that. You're gonna install the View CLI in, on your machine, which is essentially doing this, right? Your package manager is just gonna say, "Hey, I want to globally install the View CLI," and that'll let you create and mess with View projects uh, with it. So it is a nice way of being able to create and run these projects. Um, however. I want to make sure that we set up a nice project with this. So I think we can pretty much get away with this. Um, I don't want it to be called my project. I want it to be called, uh, in our case, like client app or something like that, because that is the name that it will be expecting in uh, ASP.NET. Uh, if I want this to be like the front end of this site, that is a name that ASP.NET has built in. Um, yeah, so, uh, Phil, if, if I can find a way to make that, like, a thing where someone could decide whether or not the music is on or not, like, through Twitch, then, yeah, I would absolutely do that and be able to be like, here's some background music and you can turn it on or off, or even maybe pick your own. Uh, hey, Mr. Shoji, welcome. Okay. Uh, so, let's go ahead and do this. So... Open in a terminal. So now we have a PowerShell terminal open. And in theory, that should work. But before I run that, I am going to check, just make sure that I didn't miss something. Let's have a look at should be a no. Okay, well, I'm going to try it, see if it asks me the questions I'm expecting. You know, that's what that's what source control's for. Um, oh! Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, send the music to channels 3 to 4 now. Uh, yeah, wait, uh, Phil, I, I should definitely check into that. Uh, I, I remember hearing someone recently say something about, like, 
copyright strikes on videos because uh, like, you know, the rights holders freaked out about it. Uh, it doesn't like the name client type. Is it because I did capital? Or something? Why does it say that's an invalid product name? Yeah, okay, so it didn't like capital letters. I guess I'm going to fight it over that. Okay, uh, so when you run the View CLI to create a project, it puts you in sort of this little interactive interface. So I can click to manually select, uh, but Babel and ESLint are what I'm going to run for this project, which are the defaults. I'm going to pick it anyway. Uh, exactly, Codebase Alpha. I'm not terribly worried about it. I may do that eventually, uh, just so that um, I don't have to worry about it. But yes, um, I don't want my VODs getting copyright strikes. Uh, they shouldn't with the with these songs. But just in case it is nice for that to be able to remove. Um, do you know, do they remove the music automatically? Uh, or do they wait until there's a copyright challenge against it? Like, does it just automatically remove all of channels 3 and 4 now? Like, my audio or the music is bad? Because mic sound was cutting out. How's the mic sound now? Is the mic a little bit better? All audio. Okay. Yeah, because if it because there, there's a difference of whether it's the mic or whether it's the music. It's good? Okay. This is taking a lot longer to set up this project than I thought it would. Ah, oh, you gotta love package managers. <laughs> hey, there we go. Oh, sweet. You run a fresh thing, you get 14 vulnerabilities. Awesome. Am I gonna fix those right now? No, no I'm not. The site's not published anywhere. <laughs> yes, exactly. 50,000 node modules, that takes a while. Hello, World A. <laughs> yes, exactly, Fuel Snable. Uh, a lot of times the Hello World app still takes a lot of power to, to get that thing running, which is just silly. Okay. So, in theory, uh, so we're going to follow the same rule I mentioned before. We're not going to be doing things... So, we took a step, we're going to try running things first, and then we're going to connect them together. So our, we are not planning on separately serving the client app and the API. I'm going to serve them through the same site. Uh, that is at least my plan right now. However, I should try running it once just to make sure that everything got set up correctly. So we're going to do a an npm run serve, and this basically tells it Hey, spin up a web server using this website, and it should run. Once it's running, I should be able to visit it in a browser and see it working. It is localhost 8080. And there it is. <laughs> Dev Nelson, welcome! Uh, and Wazabi Dev and Voidcomp Phil. Uh, thank you, Stole Penner, for gifting those three subs. Welcome to the Dev Chatter crew. Welcome, everyone. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll say th why thank you. Uh, it, yes, yes, I am alive. I am alive. Okay, uh, people rant on VS for being big and slow. Yes, exactly, but uh, it it's not all that much better outside of the VS world. Um, oh, yeah, MS Teams can also be pretty bad. Um, buddy of mine was attending an Angular course through your company, and the teacher was installing Angular packages. In it. Ah, yes. 
that is part of the challenge of uh, of going all the way to Node for uh, anything like that. Uh, the best bet if you're doing any kind of presentation or things like that is either to have it locally cached already so when it installs it gets a lot faster, stuff like that. Uh, and yes, Code with Sean, I am alive and I am uh, doing a stream, which is crazy. Um, do, 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 do. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, that's part of the reason why if you are going to do any workshops or anything like that, um, the best thing that you can do is to say, here's all the requirements, do all the installs first, uh, because that still lets the the student like go through the steps, uh, but they only then need to do it day of if they ran into a problem, so then the instructor can help with issues instead of just having everyone do it right then and then you can jump right in um uh what do i think about blazer uh that is a fantastic question um so i like the idea of of uh of blazer the reason i like the idea of it is that C sharp is a good language. Um, that being said, um, I don't know what what Blazor is going to bring to the table that we can't do with JavaScript. So the problem that I have, so I like that's why I start with I like it. I do think it's a good idea. I think it's cool. I think it's neat. I'd love to mess with it. If there's some cool stuff we can translate because of it, that's awesome. The So like, you know, take existing code and be able to run it there is really neat. Um, but the challenge is it really just seems like the, it's like, okay, if you didn't want to use JavaScript or TypeScript or any other like, you know, transpile to JavaScript type thing, then you can use C Sharp instead. And it feels like its only reason for existing is just so that you can use C Sharp instead of that, rather than, hey, we built a way to leverage existing C Sharp stuff. Now, it does do the latter, but it doesn't feel like that's the, like... <laughs> but the problem is, you're in that, like, wait a minute, so what's the reason for it? Oh, just so you don't have to write JavaScript? Okay, JavaScript's not that bad. <laughs> So, and, and, I, and I mean that, JavaScript really isn't that bad. Um, there are good things and bad things about it. There are good things and bad things about C-sharp too. Languages are just different. Um, so, let's see. Uh, yes, Blazor Lite. Yes. Uh, Blazor is a lot of things because uh, they use that name everywhere. Yes, the, it is a little bit overused at this point because Microsoft... Uh, the funny thing is Blazor's practically just like Razor again. It's like, okay, guys, we got it. Razor sounded cool. Blazor sounds cool. Awesome. Uh, and yes, yep, Honey Pop's exactly right. Uh, it's for people that don't want to use JavaScript. Yep, if you don't want to use JavaScript, you can use Blazor. Um... Uh, what would you choose doing? Uh, image manipulation on front end was uh, yeah. So um, that's why I say like there there may be cases where you say okay C sharp is better at this. I'm going to use Blazor for it. That's why I say I like it. I think it's got a good like concept. The problem is I don't know if um, I don't know if there's enough reason to get it off the ground to the point where it's going to have a huge community backing behind it that's actually like going strong and a lot of stuff built in it. Um, if that does end up being the case, awesome. And then you can get some of the specialized use cases where it really is a better solution. Um, but the challenge is if all it does is the same thing that Vue or React or Angular can do in JavaScript and there's not any like yeah, it, this is its selling point, then it's not going to pick up enough traction for it to matter. Uh, oh, so the funny thing is that... The, the, well, the challenge is that um, if your blazer is turning into... Uh, like, 
if you're using Blazor as like your front end solution, then the problem is that you still do have the security issue of client side code. If you like Vue, but you think React's HTML and JavaScript and JSX approach is cleaner, yeah, I, and 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 that's why I say whenever I am talking with people about this, that your choice of Angular, React, and Vue really come down to your preference on things. So uh, I can make a recommendation based on your circumstances and what you tend to like, but at the end of the day, it really is just preference. Um, yeah, so um, Blazor does have a large community backing, and part of that is because there are uh, a bunch of .NET devs that are really hyped and, and, and behind it. Um, and I intend to use it. By the way, it's Blazor Day. If anybody didn't know, they're doing a they're, they're, there's a Blazor event. So this conversation was going to come up no matter what on this stream. Um, <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Phil, you may be right. Um, it's hard to say. So I'm not going to read the whole thing that Phil said, uh, but Microsoft does uh, get involved in uh, the open source community with with a lot of things. So um, behind the scenes, I think Microsoft adds a lot of stuff to open source more than people realize, and even like the non-Microsoft side of things. So they, they put a lot of work into open source projects, which is good because they are a software company and they're going to leverage these things. Uh, so they need to be doing that um, in order to sort of be involved. But yeah. <clears throat> okay, we have a view project. Good enough. Let's go ahead and jump back into our code. Uh, let's kill this. Okay. No more project run. Let's jump over into GitHub Desktop. Yeah, I don't know what that word is, code base alpha. You're gonna have to figure that one out. Oh, dang it. I forgot to check in my controller first. Okay. So, uh, Remove uh, sample controller commit uh, add a ping controller and before we continue on add a view site so there's our basic view site that we have created <coughs> okay and then next up we want to start clearing some of this and connect things. Uh, which thing is it? What, what was the uh, what was the word? Oh, schedule. Yeah, that is that is a word. Code base alpha. Are you accusing me of cheating and using using non words as words in this thing just to make people lose at Hangman? Are you accusing me of that? Do you think my games are rigged? Oh, wait, hang on. Yes, you are accusing me of that freak. <laughs> okay, uh, where was I? I want to make this stuff work. Okay. So, there's a couple of things that we need to wire up to make this happen. So, first off, I am going to go uh adding some extra code so by the way this is this is what included swagger for us to be able to end it um jonathan uh congratulations and thank you stool penner for gifting a sub to jonathan uh welcome to the dev chatter crew and enjoy your new emotes hey and now you're following now too excellent uh yes yeah, exactly. I know. Once you get once you get a sub, you can't not follow. <laughs> and uh, hey, Strife, welcome. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Uh, so I pulled up a project uh, on on my other screen, so you won't have to by the look in this. I'm going to copy and paste some code out of this. Uh, the project is a um, 
spa application. Yeah, funny enough, that's the word I couldn't come up with. Uh, it's the spa template uh, from Microsoft for Visual Studio. So I started with the API project, but I didn't want all the like junk that it was going to put in with the spa project. So I went and grabbed that, um, and I'm just going to use the template and just paste in some stuff. So the first couple of things that we're going to need are this. I'm going to define the spa root. So I'm basically telling it, hey, the, your single page application is rooted in the client app folder. Um, I think it won't care about the fact that I don't match the casing. Uh, it should be fine with that. Uh, the other thing, if you look inside client app, um, when it builds, it's going to end up with a big node modules folder, I think. Does it already have it and it's just hiding it for me there? Client app? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, I think it excludes that by default, but I'm going to need to make sure. Uh, the other thing, for development purposes, um, something that is going to happen is, since I'm not going to host this in like IIS or anything like that on my local machine, I want this to be able to spin up a separate site. You'll remember that when I ran that little terminal down here, well, it's behind my head now, um, that I did a um, an npm uh, run serve on the website. So I basically said to npm, hey, spin up your web server and run my site so that my view site could run, because the view site is kind of like a site, but I put it inside of an ASP.NET project so I can run it as part of the ASP.NET project. Now, the trick is that um, when I publish a version of this, it's going to basically build the, the view site and put that in my ASP.NET site as the like front end files. Uh, so then if I host this somewhere, I can run it all as like one site. But in order to run it locally, in order to make that happen, um, because it doesn't like public, it doesn't do a publish, it just does a build, it doesn't move the files to the right places and everything. So for development reasons, I have to point it to a different folder and I'm going to use the view CLI to be the thing that actually runs it. So as part of that, I'm going to put in a view CLI middleware package, which essentially is what's going to be able to uh, act as the middleware that'll spin it up using the view CLI. Um. <laughs> and, uh, Yes, yes. Uh, welcome, everyone. Hey, Pudding. Greetings. Uh, do, the the honor. Uh, I had a little bit of... So my, my schedule has cleared up a little bit. Uh, my kid is sleeping better, and uh, I am my amount of client work has decreased slightly. So I was like, hey, this is a perfect time to start streaming again. Uh, so hence, hence we're streaming again. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I gotta say, it'd be really impressive. Like, my green screen's not perfect. I've got some lighting issues, but it'd be really impressive if I got the green screen to look this nice under a bed, uh, pudding. <laughs> but no, uh, fa family's not, in I'm the only one in the house, so I don't have to hide. No, no, uh, no, no kids wandering in here. Uh, don't, don't have to dodge that. Okay. <clears throat> so now that we have uh, a sort of defined the spa root, this becomes a variable that we can use. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we need a new item group. So I'm just going to copy that. One. And inside of it, what we do is this. So whatever the project said for the spa root, we're going to say, no, remove it. And then what we're going to do is say this. Uh, so essentially what we want to say is, uh, like, don't publish these files. So the reason is that, um, view is going to take care of, it's like, like we're going to have, these are going to get built is the idea. So because view needs to be the thing that does this, Visual Studio is not going to be the thing that does this is sort of the idea. Uh, and then I am going to grab some stuff straight out of the uh, sample project and toss it right on in here. And I think it'll work. So 
these are basically the for the spa make sure that we've got node uh, and then go ahead and actually do a publish so it's gonna do like when it's running this project so if we're supposed to do a publish then we're gonna do an npm install an npm build so essentially going through the steps that you would normally do and this just sets it up so that visual studio knows to do this when we do builds uh, hopefully that hopefully everything I said made sense there uh, but the idea being uh, like just just let it go um, really one second Helps if I type it right. Hang on. I'm restarting the color thingy. Hello from the bot. Yes, hi. There we go. The important things. You can, look, you cannot stream without the lights changing color by chat's control. Come on. Come on. Can't be a professional streamer if chat can't control the colors of your stream. That's just... <laughs> surprised you didn't know that. Learn something new every day. Okay. So, in theory, I have not broken the site. So we're going to test two things. First off... Um, I've made a couple of these changes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to run the main site, and then I'm also going to try to run the second site. If both the view site and the other site still work, I haven't totally broken everything. So step one, we're going to run this site. The Swagger site uh, still seems to be able to refresh. Uh, we're going to try this and run it, and hey, there's our Pong. So that site seems to work. This site it's going to fail right now because it's not running. So see how it's just spinning. So there we go. Now if I go down to the developer PowerShell, I should be able to do my NPM run serve. And when I do, this site should suddenly load. There it is. Okay, excellent. So uh, what that means is that I did not break these sites. So our project file has not screwed anything up yet. Uh, take care, Crimson Green. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good one. Enjoy going back to work. Uh, you made a little bot in Python so that people can use channel points to change the hue light color behind me. Yes, uh, it is an awesome thing. Uh, there is some interesting stuff I was messing with with hue colors uh, that you might find interesting starting ski. I'll have to show it to you at some point. Uh, I don't ha I don't I don't have a follow age command. Uh, I don't know if that's something I should ever build, but I ever built one and I was like, yeah. <laughs> nice. You followed me three years ago. Well, you, yeah, you're right. You could just go to the, uh, go to a place where you can look that up. Uh, is that like, I don't know if that's built into the UI of Twitch yet, or if you have to like go to some other bot somewhere to look it up from their API. Okay, yeah, so it'll tell you. <clears throat> I'm not surprised. Okay, um, so next thing we got to do is make it so that this... So we added in, essentially, the pieces that are required in order for us to connect these two sites. So the next thing that I need to do is jump over into the startup project. Blah. Not program, startup. Okay. So inside of here, first off, I'm going to get rid of all the clutter at the top. And I want to jump down. So I talked about controllers being a thing. Um, but there is something else we're going to need to add if we're planning on hosting this in the site. And that is static files. So we're going to add in static files. Um, and for this one, we're going to need to configure it. 
So uh, they do. So for a lot of these little configuration things, they do this approach of like, um, you know, we're going to give you an action, uh, and essentially then you can, you know, receive this parameter and do something. So we're going to take in the configuration and say this config root path. So this is essentially the same thing that we put in the project file. But now we need to define, so that's telling the project how it works, and this is telling at runtime ASP.NET how it works. So the previous one's more about building, because project files in, in Visual Studio are more like make files, they're, they're a build file. Um, this is the running website, I need to tell it, hey, here's where the stuff is. So we're going to tell it that the root path is client app. Uh... Yeah, you guys have been following me for a long time. Three years is quite a while. Uh, well, I started streaming in, uh, yeah, it would have been February of 2018. So Crimson Green's probably been following me since I started streaming. Because I, I knew Crimson before before I started this stream. So that doesn't surprise me. Yep, the, the people that have been following for three years. <clears throat> uh, I don't know who that is. I, see, I now, I now want when people say, like, I look like so-and-so. And no, I'm not going to search for a person's name on the stream. But I will, uh, I will do it on the other monitor. Because, no, I don't risk a... Oh, man! Oh, oh, now that's a compliment. Wow! Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about now. I didn't, I, don't, I don't know a lot of actors' names. I'll admit that. I, I just don't. Um, but... <laughs> well, I, I will take that as a compliment, because I'm, I'm a big fan of that actor. As soon as I looked it up, it's like, oh, yeah, I love him in, in a lot of roles. He's really good. One of, one of my favorites. Uh... No, I didn't wait. It's on, it's on my list. I, do you know how long my list is? Look, I don't have time to stream. I don't have time to watch, like, all the various movies and TV and everything that I've got in my list. It's going to take me forever. I won't get there anytime soon. Okay, so this tells it, hey, we've got some static files for a spa. This is where they are. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is jumping in and, uh, like, telling it, not in the setup, but like the like run part, which is what the next part is. Like configure is more like, hey, you're gonna do this now. Um, it's not the configure. Like, funny thing is, I always think of configure services being like more setupy than the one called configure, because it almost like the way I always think of these is, um, this is where you set up all the stuff that you want to have available, and then. This is like when it's like when it's running actually like start the stuff. It's kind of what it feels like to me. Now maybe people think of it a little differently, like because they both technically are configuring stuff. You're still defining like the configuration. So like yeah, but meh. I w that's at least the way I think of it. Okay, so we need to do something else. So we want to use routing, but then we also need to tell it, so we added the static files, we now need to tell it to use the static files. There it is. Um, and, um, I don't remember if there are any options we need to use. It's one of these. No. I don't think there's anything we need to use for that. Um, we're already using authorization and endpoints. There's also like use spa is the other one that we have to do. Use spa. And this we need to config. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's on my list. <laughs> what board do you want then? <laughs> then it's on my list. Uh, you're too young to be here. You're probably uh, young. Uh, I don't know how young you are, but yeah, they. 
I I never know if I'm one of the older or the younger people in a room, except for like some places where you're like, everyone here is like, I swear they're all 13. Uh, if you end up in some gaming community, sometimes you end up feeling like an old person. But one of the things that I like about um, being in a development uh, community is that I happen to know that there are a lot of people that are older and younger here, and it is like a lot of... Um, there's a lot of value in that because you get such a wide variety, wide array, array and variety, a wide variety of um, like perspectives and backgrounds. Like everybody's used different technologies, they're looking into different ones, um, and so like when you started programming sort of dictates like how you approach a lot of things. So it's nice to have uh, different age groups of people. Exactly. As Codebase Alpha mentions, the best dev teams have a wide uh, age range. Uh, if all you've got is a bunch of young people or a bunch of old people, you probably don't have enough uh, perspective on the team. Now, that being said, like, you, I'm not saying that you need, you, you need to have a 70-year-old and a 16-year-old on your team uh, in order to be a good team. Uh, you can obviously be a great team even if everybody's, you know, like... 10 years apart but like but at the same time it usually helps to have that extra bit of perspective because both both ends of that are going to bring something different to the table okay uh so the we need to set there's essentially like a source path that we need to set um and then the view CLI middleware that I mentioned, we need to tell it that if it's development, to start that. So, what we need to do is say environment dot is development. So if it is, we are going to say uh, config use view CLI and then it's something like is this yeah, so the first one right here, because that has a default value that says serve, I think I can just leave this totally blank. So that should be enough to make it work. The other thing is I want to do config options, and I said it's source path, and I need to set this to a value based on whether or not it is development. So if it is development, then we are going to set it to client app, client app, and then if it is not, then we are going to set it to, I believe, dist, because I think that's what it will create it as. Um, and actually, I think I need the forward slash on that as well. Uh, and that should set us up to have a spa application running in this if I didn't forget anything, which we're going to find out in a moment if I did. So essentially what we've now done is we have told ASP.NET, hey, I know you want to like run your own stuff and have your own like front end stuff, but we've said no, we're going to do a static spa site and this is where it's going to be. And if we're in development mode, you're going to run this in order to get that static spa site running. Uh, in production, uh, what we're going to do is, um, I believe we should be able to get uh, our hosting environment to respect that they're the same site because the files will just be there. Uh, so essentially we'll be taking those and having them as like the content of, like the, they'll be the static files of our ASP.NET site and it should be able to run it all together. Um, but in this version, uh, because I want to get it running this way, um, I sh it, essentially Visual Studio is going to lose track of it, I think, So if I don't specify it this way. So let me find out whether or not I can make it work or not. So we're going to try building it. Let me make sure it opens in the right browser. And I'm going to debug just so we can see if it's working as expected or not. So it still has in it some of its definition that its default page is Swagger, so it's going to open to Swagger. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, fuel stamp. On your current team, you have people that are 25 to 70 plus. That is a good range. Uh, the team that I'm working with right now uh, has uh, a person that I think is like maybe 20, 21, 22. Like one of those like really early 20s. And then it also has someone that um, is like beyond normal retirement age. I don't know an exact age, but like, you know, a, a 65 plus. So it's another wide range team uh, that I'm working with, uh, which I do I do enjoy. Uh, but uh, that being said, that's the, those are the outliers on the team. Most of the people are like uh, 30s and 40s. So, which is not all that surprising. Okay. So this, does it still work? It does. Ping returns Pong. Next question. If I go here without the word swagger, what happens? It has client app as the title and is the view site. There we go. Okay. So what that means is, what happens if I go to ping? Is it is it here? Yeah, okay. So ping responds with a controller, but nothing responds with the view site. So it looks like everything is up and running in the right spot. So, yay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go, go outliers. Now, the funny thing is uh, I, I, <laughs> I used to be one of those outliers. Uh, I, uh, you know, I was a professional programmer at a very young age working on uh, development teams. So you can you can be the outlier by being young, but then the problem is you get older and you're no longer the outlier. You're somewhere in the middle again. Uh, but then eventually you'll become an outlier again. <laughs> okay, so excellent. Our site works. That is like the perfect time for a commit. So this is going to be um, host spa uh, in... Uh, Asp.net project. So that is actually putting it in there. This is those pieces and this. Excellent. Okay. A couple of other things that I want to clean up. Um, uh, I, I have not, Phil. Uh, you have feels that we have a serious question. Uh, a bit of a problem you're having is a distinct separation between backend and front end devs. Oh, yeah, the, you'll find a lot of people that don't want to, that, that don't cross the boundary of backend and front end. Um, usually my solution to that is having people uh, pair program across those lines so that the backend and front end people are both still working on the backend front end. So even if they try defining themselves that way, at least they're getting exposure to both, uh, which helps to solve the problem. And that also sometimes leads to people trend, like switching which side they prefer. Um, but it is a tough thing. Nikki Supra, welcome, greetings. Yep, long time no see, I am doing well. Uh, so there are a bunch of new people. First off, welcome. Uh, if you are new here, uh, my name is Brendan uh, and I am the host of the Dev Chatter live stream. Uh, we are a community of developers that just like having fun chatting about code and writing some as well while we're on stream. Um, the, uh, As you might have guessed from some of the comments from some of our viewers, uh, we missed quite a few streams, uh, and uh, but we are starting to come back. Uh, I mentioned like a week ago that I was planning on starting to stream again, uh, now that my schedule has cleared up a little bit. Um, uh, I, If you're wondering why I haven't been streaming, uh, I got a little bit too busy with work and with family. Uh, so uh, my family is now larger as, uh, um, well, my wife was pregnant before uh, all the pandemic and lockdown and everything started. Uh, so we were some of those people that got to find out what it's like to, you know, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun when you're like, oh yeah, uh, you can't have visitors at the hospital. But yes, yeah, so I have, uh, I have another kid now. Uh, he's great. Uh, and he has only just started sleeping better, which is, <laughs> it's been quite a while. Uh, if you think about the timeline line I just mentioned, um, so he, he's, uh, m like, what is he, eight, nine months old? He's about to be nine months old. Uh, and so it's like, 
getting to this point and uh, finally started to sleep well is, uh, you know, you can probably guess why I didn't stream very much. Um, but anyway, uh, he is doing great now, so that's good. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'm hoping we're going to start making these streams a regular thing again um, and not just this one-off. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, thank you for the congratulations, by the way. Um, yeah, it's, it's been good. And, uh, like, yeah, it's, it's fun. Uh, and no, I, I don't usually bring my kids on stream. They, they do not make appearances on here. Uh, okay, so let me catch up on chat. Uh, you can lead a developer to knowledge, but you can't make them think. <laughs> this is true. Uh, and yes, Fuel Snable, exactly. Pair programming is absolutely something that can help cross those boundaries. If your teams are trying to establish like, no, I don't work on that, I don't work on that, no, I don't work on the tests, I don't work on the, the QA, I don't work with QA, I don't do the front end, I only work with the database. It's like, okay, yeah, like, I, I agree, you're really good at that. We're going to make sure that when there's important database stuff, you're the one that's, like, working on that with someone else. Um... <laughs> So that the knowledge is spread around a little bit also, but at the same time, it's like we're not siloing in you Siloing you in there as the only person who knows anything about the database or the only person that knows how we're doing our navigation or the only person that knows uh, how, how our routing or our data binding works or how uh, The you know the the DTO works or how the API is set up. It's like no No, you do not get to be the only person that does that heck you could be a graphic designer and I'm still going to make you work with the front-end devs. It's like, I don't care. Like, you need to work with the rest of the team. <clears throat> and yeah, exactly. So if, you, if you're if you on the back-end team, Fuel Snable, um, you should be able to work on the front-end. Uh, have you ever made a Discord bot? Uh, so I have not made the Discord bot. I was planning on connecting some of our stuff to Discord, uh, but I never did. Um, but I looked into Discord bots, and they actually seem like really simple and almost the exact same as like any other bot. So Discord is not did not go like some crazy route. They pretty much m meshed with how everybody else does it. Um, you could do UI work, but you find it frustrating. Your UIs are uh, yeah. So the trick is uh, code base Alpha that. If you are not someone that's good at UI work or not good at front-end work or not good at back-end work or whatever you're not an expert at but you can do a little bit of, then you're, like, going to be with someone who is when you're pairing on that. Um, and either until you're better or just always. Um, but you should still work there. That way you can make the small changes and know how the rest of the code is set up. Uh, the communication on the team is to help the feature and more than forcing the front end to do back end. Yes, exactly. Yes, it's communication. So it's something that I'd actually been telling a graphic. So uh, there's a graphic designer that I worked with for a really long time whose name I won't mention. Uh, I, he's an awesome guy, by the way. Um, and uh, he was resistant to pairing for a long time. And then the funny thing is eventually he did end up pairing. Like we had like developers working with him while he was doing some of like the design stuff that he was doing. And it's funny, like graphic design, like not necessarily like UX design focused or anything like that. Not really a front end developer. So like, you know, doesn't, you know, not JavaScript or anything like that. But it's funny because, you know, it's like he like he then starts doing for a while. He's like, this is amazing. I'm like, yes, <laughs> like you don't have the same disciplines. That's the advantage. That means the stuff that you don't know, they do. The stuff you know, they don't know. And it's like, yes, it's like, it's better. So, either way, it's just funny. Uh, like, the number of people that that um, will will rail against it until they've done it sometimes. And then it's like, oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, this is great. It's like, yep. It was really useful having someone help you with stuff that knew different things than you. Uh, okay, so, yeah, Codebase Alpha. Uh, yep. Yep, your Twitch bot works with Discord and and Slack. Nice. Uh, oh, nice. You, you're uh, switching over to UX and UI design, Nike Super. That's fun. Uh, I I know some developers who I I should say I know some people that do UI and UX work uh, that started as developers and and switched over. Um, so it's fun stuff. Uh, okay, so this site runs. Yay. Let's go mess with some stuff. Since the site runs, that's when you start messing. 
Okay, so first things, um, let's demystify project files a little bit while we're in here. So we're gonna, a couple of pieces are gonna get added into this property group here because I am gonna go into the properties of the project and I am going to mess with some things. So uh, what did we call this? Uh, so game oversight, public site. Whoa, okay, stop. Okay. <laughs> so something I like doing, uh, I like project names that are short because I can read them in the Visual Studio Solution Explorer, but then assembly and, and namespaces, I usually like to have a little bit more in them so that someone can see what it is. So if we're calling the project Game Oversight, then public site practically has no meaning except to us that that's the public site. <clears throat> so... Uh, when I do that, so these are the two values I added, you're going to see two new entries in the project file. So they're right here. It creates an assembly name and a root namespace. Uh, and so that's all like the, the project file when you're messing with it. It's just a UI for making changes to here and in like our current version, like essentially the .NET Core version of the project files that we have, it is super simple and streamlined for most of these things. So the majority of it is these. So .NET Framework days, I would have told you dodge project files like the plague. Don't look back there if you can avoid it. They're ugly. They're filled with junk that doesn't need to be in there. Uh, they've now gotten a lot better about that. And the reason is that this right here was not here. And that's because if you have the defaults, it doesn't even include it. If you're if you're doing the default scenario, it's not even in the product file. It's it's not there. It's assumed that that's the assembly name and the root namespace because that's the name of the project. It is only when you have deviated from the like the default case that you even need to have something in here. And that is basically just a policy that that they took with pretty much everything in uh, the .NET Core project file structure. Is there's a default. If you have the default, we're not even including it in the file. It's just going to be there so you don't have to have a whole bunch of clutter that's in there uh, messing things up. Uh, they also tried to keep as much of it as possible uh, simple and, and editable. So, for example, if I had some reason to keep these two separate, I could say, like, well, these are the one. Uh, whoops. <laughs> what I meant to do was this. Uh, I could say, like, uh, that, that these are the uh, a a API dependencies. And um, then down here, I could have these defined as the, as the spa dependencies or something like that, right? And so, like, I could separate out my dependencies in the project file if I want to. And so, like, that's why I say, like, the way that they did it is really nice in that they made these things simple with a lot of control and there is no, like, it has to be here, it has to be here, it's gonna be here, it's gonna, it's like, no. Like, they went, like, so uh, loose with this that you can do your own organization, you can, you can, like, build these how you want. It's, it's, like, th thumbs up from me. Um, great, great job, guys. <clears throat> Thank you for, for going simple for once. Okay, uh, so that's our change. Good. I, so I just want to make sure I hadn't messed anything else up because I was messing around in a project file. Okay, so now we do the fun part, which is I changed the namespace uh, because when I created this, uh, first thing I should have done, which, uh, well, no, I, I did it the right way because we're at this point now. Um, but like one of the first things you need to do before you start wiring everything together, I probably should have done this before I wired up the spa site, uh, is fix all the namespaces. So... <clears throat> I want to have a namespace that's an actual namespace. So we're just going to go through every every file and just give it a quick rename. Well, we only have like 10. So <clears throat> quick and easy to just jump through each of these and make sure they're good. Client app shouldn't have anything. Properties doesn't have anything. I think that might be everything then. Did I get it all? Sort usings. All right, let's make sure everything still runs. <clears throat> so we're going to debug the site again. It's going to take us to the swagger by default. Um, try it out. Execute. OK. 
Comes back with our Pong. Perfect. Hmm. Okay. View site is working. Fantastic. Okay. Let's commit. So that is adding in a namespace. Um, adjusting the namespace. Commit. Okay, let's push all those changes. Uh, but React is it? Wait, hang on. What is this? Uh, Codebase Alpha works with React to practice. So you can. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. So Codebase Alpha hits on the exact point. Um, I should say the the exact um, the exact point that you need to be uh, very um, it I, I guess that what the, what I'm going for is it is the exception that you need to point out um, in that when I say that you shouldn't be doing like the hey these are front end people and back end people on on your team is unless you really have a fundamental like domain difference if you are building like a public api for something you can have a separate team that is both consuming that api and building it and in that case you would have a team that is doing fully back-end work uh, so for example um twitch most likely has a a team of we'll say back-end developers that build the api that other developers can connect to if Twitch's own products connect to that same API, then that's probably separate teams that are building that. Now, the reason why I say that that is a distinct thing is that when you're building a public API, you're dealing with more than one consumer. If you are building, so they have to deal with the fact that there's consumers like me, and there's consumers that are internal to Twitch, and there are, cons you know, like a lot of different people that they need to build this for. So they're not just building just to use it themselves, hence separate team, because there really is a separate use case here. Um, if you're building a website, a single website that has a front end and a back end, a server side and a client side, separating the teams can be fine at first. Having them be completely separate leads to a lot of problems because you can get into the situation where Oh, well, the front end needs to be the one that, that defines what this, you know, communication looks like, or the, the back end does, and maybe neither one wants to, or maybe both of them want to. And then there's this, you know, fighting of, like, who's responsibility and who's messing this up, and, oh, one side broke it, and they need to fix it, and, you know, like, they changed this, and they need to be the ones that change it, and, you know, or, no, they shouldn't change it on our side, and they need to tell us about it, so we could be the ones that change it, and it's just, like, headbutting and fighting and arguing, and it's like... Yeah, it there's there's no need to uh, to have that separation cross functional teams like you need to know like you need to know enough about the other side to be able to be the one that makes the changes and both sides need to be okay with either person doing that. That being said, even like there are going to be people that know C sharp better, know JavaScript better, maybe it's Java. I don't care whatever it is for your back end or front end or what whatever. Like you need to have people that that can do either side. <sighs> Silly, silly thing. Okay. So that is our basic site. Let's go ahead and jump into the client side. So let's do let's do a little bit of view now. Because now we can have a view view site. So app.view, what do we got? So this is what it created by default. It, uh, it's got a hello world view component that it is importing and showing to us. So for now, <coughs> takes in a message. That's funny. Mona Tell the World. Uh, it's used right here, and there's the message. So let's go ahead and change this just to make sure that everything's working. Uh, let's say, uh, welcome to uh, welcome uh, gamer. <laughs> Prepare for chat to take over your game. Maybe I should have said all your game are belong to us. That might have been better, huh? All your game. All right. 
let's have a look at the root page now. Let's see if it added it in. Come on. Welcome, gamer. Prepare for chat to take over your game. Excellent. So I do want to add in navigation, routing, everything like that. I haven't decided if we're using Vuex yet or not. Come on. Oh, come. You're telling me that that my that my jokes are are like old timey. You know? Okay, good. yeah, that's pretty old timey. You know? People don't even know what I am. But... All right, I might go home now. Get off my lawn. Wait, I'm already home, and you're not on my lawn. Never mind. <clears throat> Okay, so let's see. For combined construction project, check out this. No, 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 no. Uh, installed plugins. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I don't need these. Um, and the funny thing is, even this like message thing parameter thingy, we don't even really need that. We're just gonna leave it here because uh, I want to put in a whole structure. Maybe we'll do that for the next stream. Uh, cause I want to do actual like navigation with separate pages and things like that. Yeah. Get off my digital lawn. Um, uh, for anyone that didn't know, there's an old game called zero wing that had a really bad translation that the internet thought was hilarious where a character said, all your base are belong to us. Okay. Okay, so a couple of things. So um, I, I apologize. I'm thinking through things right now. So static assets are working. I know this because that logo is showing up on the page. So this right here came from that assets. So that tells me this is working fine. Uh, other things going on here of note. Um, uh, it is definitely build. So it is definitely when I run Visual Studio, it is running a build. Um, it, it is it is actually running things and I know that because the app dot view here is working correctly so um, I changed this message and you'll notice that this template this script and this style this is the dot view file that it uses so this structure will not work if it did not build that code so like you can't give this to a browser and expect it to run a dot view file that doesn't happen it had to get built uh beforehand so our pieces are actually running here so that's some of the stuff that i'm just making sure yeah yeah we got that set up uh okay um i don't think i need this readme well i guess it's the instructions for how to run this um yeah, I'm not sure what to do with that right now. Okay, so... What stuff do we need in here? So this is the basic public site. Why don't we create our other API project now? Let's create the other one. So we're going to do a new project. Oh, and what do we call this one? Just API? Uh, maybe, ga maybe game API, extension API, could just be the API, private API, yeah, we could private API it, yeah, it's not like, The thing is that it's like publicly visible, so it's weird to call it private because like your browser is gonna connect to this thing. So like your 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 browser will know of this API. Okay, we definitely want it set up with HTTPS. Uh, we can add Docker support later if we want. Uh, because we're gonna develop it, it's going to have. Uh, we're gonna leave. So this enable open API support is automatically gonna include Swagger. <laughs> nothing to see here, API. Yep, yep. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Nothing going on. Nothing going on. Okay. So we'll create this one. <clears throat> 
So this is the one that if I set it as the startup project, it should now have, it should have the weather forecast that the other one had. And we can make sure we're in the right one because it should tell us the name of the API. Crypto mining API. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Fuel Snable. We'll totally use that. Um, oh, see, this is concerning. I'm not seeing swagger here. That's got me worried. Let's try it again. There we go. API is the name. Let's try out its weather forecast. Okay, so there's a response body. So it gave us a weather forecast. <laughs> okay. Uh, I almost forgot I need to commit the other one first. This is our change to the view. Um, so we're going to call this like, uh, uh, change text for, you know what? We're not even going to bother because we don't really need those changes. So we'll leave them as is. All right. So this is, uh, adding a, uh, an API project. Okay. <laughs> I can modify arbitrary memory API. Thank you every afternoon. Perfect. And yes, you're right. So the, the funny thing is, for security reasons, the um, when I wrote Interactive 7, uh, I intentionally don't use the values that are ever given to me by a user. No value that a user types in do I ever manipulate memory with. The closest we get to that is when they give us a name. We take that and we translate that to a specific set of values that we look at and we say, hey, did you meet one of these? Okay, we'll allow you to send us these, you know, nine values from this very specific set that we, we will pick and then pass those nine on. <laughs> but in any other case, all they're doing is telling, again, it's like, okay, you gave us values like, yes, we, you know translate that to the version of this and then put it through there but it's like we're we're very careful to never use their raw values because that is just a recipe for really really easy failure on our part now this is going to be very indirect in that they're talking to the api and the api is then talking to the program the program is then translating that information so slightly harder for them to actually get that trick to work <clears throat> okay so the api seemed to work uh this one will also lose its weather forecast uh and on this one instead of just creating a ping controller which we should make a ping controller um so let's start by just making a ping controller but then we're going to make another controller because uh, this one, we're actually going to make the first, like, real controller that gets used by this. And all I want it to do is say whether or not someone is playing the game. So for now, uh, this will be string, get, ping controller, and then this is just going to return pong. Pong. This one won't have the time. Now let's make another controller. This controller is going to be um, almost like game status controller. Now this is going to be a lie at first. I'm not real. I don't have the information because we haven't made the connection between the program and the API yet. Um, but like our game status controller <coughs> should return back something. For now, I'm going to leave it just as a boolean. We'll change the the um, signature of this later so that there's an actual object. But for now, we're just going to say true that the game is running, that they're connected to it, and then that essentially is like what we're looking for. Is that's 
how you're going to say, yes, they're actually playing. We should activate. Because uh, if we're going to make a Twitch extension, not only are we going to need to determine, are they playing the right game? We're going to need to say, not only are they playing the right game, but they have Interactive 7 connected right now to our API, and thus you can control their game. <clears throat> okay. So that ought to do that. This one needs to get a rename of the file. Then that should be it. We're going to project. Uh, working on a project called Dev Streams. You've been cursing your name for competition in SEO. Code spent. Uh, well, uh, you know, I've got a Dev Streams project that I need to work on. Is your Dev Streams project different from my Dev Streams project? And if so, why aren't you just working on my dev streams project? And uh, yes, it is nice to be streaming. So welcome, glad you're here. Okay. Uh, ding, get true. There we go. So yeah, I don't know if uh, smart ask if you're still here. Take a look. Uh, so. Our ping controller, we can try it. Execute the ping controller. Comes back with Pong. Perfect. Game status. Try it out. Execute. And returns back true. Okay, so looks like our site is working. Uh, we do have the pieces that we're expecting to have here. The neat thing is, S Swagger, like, see, it has, like, select definition. So if you if you need to version your APIs, like, that... Like, not only can it support that kind of thing, but then you can let users pick which version of the API they want to run. Okay. Uh, which, considering that we should be able to control both points, uh, we might use that feature, maybe. While the API is publicly available... Um, in theory, only our extension should be talking to it. That being said, someone could write their own extension that talked to our API, I guess. Fuel, I was just laughing because Fuel Snable was talking about uh, using uh, the, the T4. Fuel Snable's uh, obsession with T4 is legendary in this community. So uh, anyone who's uh, a, a newer viewer, uh, don't worry. Eventually we'll, we'll uh, bring you into the fold uh, as much as everyone else. Uh, our community is always growing and uh, we do like it quite a bit. <laughs> yes we there there are there are funny things with a lot of people uh t we have not done any t4 templates in here at all on on our stream i don't think i remember doing it even once okay uh so place a template controller with stub controllers that's a long commit message all right Let's push that up and have a look on GitHub at what we're planning on merging in. Uh, do I not have GitHub open right now? I don't. But let's fix that. Uh, where is... It just made this repository. What do you mean you can't find it? There it is. Okay. Repository. Let's do a PR just to get this in here. Uh, creation of public sites. So these are the sites. Uh, created a public... Um, public... User site and a public API site. Um, we'll call this view spa. 
uh, API site, and this is um, ASP.NET Core 5, right? I think is what they call it. We'll just say ASP.NET Core. Uh, that should be everything we need in here because I'm we we just created this project so we don't have like specific labels for anything we don't have any projects and I'm the only user so I'm the only one that can be assigned uh, we do not have any github actions set up which maybe we should set that up um, oh oh fuel stable yeah I'm not gonna bring up source generators with you uh that that does that sounds like a, a recipe for uh a lot of stuff going on in chat <clears throat> what can i not just use it mm, i was kind of hoping to just sort of start using it there guys Okay, well, either way, um, as I'm the only one working on this project, I am going to merge that in, because there's no one here to review it right now. Um, but what I do want to do is take a look at actions while we're here, because today's stream is really about just setting up some of the basic project stuff. Uh, and then once we do get it set up, then we can look at some other things. So, I think... We want to start with it. So I wonder if someone has a template. Okay, so GitHub is smart. They looked at my code and they said, hey, that's an ASP.NET project. And so they suggested that I do dot, I use the .NET GitHub action. It does, you know, it'll basically do a restore, a build, and a test. Now, first off, I didn't create the test yet because we don't have any logic here. This is just a basic project structure. We also have view that we need to look at. Now, what I'm not confident in is that a dot, well, a dot net, you know, let's find out. Let's find out. What happens if I do this? You know, I say that, but then I didn't, you know, I didn't do this. What happens if I do a .NET store, .NET restore, and a .NET build? Okay, it builds it. So I'm just gonna do a run, not a run watch, but because um, I had been I had been doing this through Visual Studio. The question is, is it going to run both things when I do this? Looks like it is. So good. Even even not running in Visual Studio, it looks like it's yeah, it looks like it did all the all the uh, npm uh, builds that it needs to do. Uh, let's say localhost. Uh, well, it says eighty eighty down there. Let's see what it did. Okay, so there's this. Slash ping. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did it do this? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, where did it put the other one? Hang on. Sorry, this is all right behind my head, so it might be hard to see. But this is all the packaging stuff. Uh, this claims it put something here. at. Uh, it says, now listening at localhost 5001. Proceed. So, a privacy error because it's not a... Um... Okay. So the 8080, okay, so something went wrong and I need to figure out why. This didn't run quite perfectly. Um, I need to figure out what I did because I, I may have I may have accidentally left two things in here that both run the spa site. 
because it looks like, if I'm not mistaken, this is a .NET serve run site, and this is the .NET uh, like core, so the ASP.NET site. So I think this one's ASP.NET and this one is not. I think this is the actual view site here. So I think it ran an NPM serve at the end of things. Yeah, see view CLI client serve on port 8080. Because I told it to do that inside of there. Now, now here's the question. If I, if I change how we did this, let me change the code a little bit. Let me comment out this piece. Now a .NET run should see that it project wasn't built. It'll build and restore. It'll, it will do like a restore and a build and a run here. Uh, and then when this completes, hopefully 8080 is not running, but 5001 is. So we'll see what it does. Fingers crossed. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. You're not gonna build it? I'm worried it's not, I'm worried this is all it's gonna do. It's not gonna build the project. So Ping is here. That's interesting. Index wasn't found. No, it's 8080 here. It's not here. But when I do this... Hmm, we're gonna need to look at that. That's a mystery. Why did it run that? Why were there two? Should have only been one. Now I didn't do a uh, I didn't do a run watch, which is why it's not automatically detecting and fixing these changes. But if I just do this, in theory, it should uh, should make it work. Now both of these should be back up. That one with ping not working and this one where it should work. There we go. Yep, okay. So things are back to working again. Still a little bit weird. So we'll need to figure that out. Um, do I still have a GitHub Actions page open? I do. Okay, so in that case, we're going to set this up. Okay, so a basic just GitHub action to just build the project. <clears throat> on a push to the main branch, on pull requests into the main branch. So anytime we send anything to the main branch, or anytime we're about to send something to the main branch, is where this is going to run. So that's what this says. It's like, on these circumstances, either a pull request here or a pull request into that branch. Now, you can add other ones if you want. So if you're going to do both main and dev and whatever, you can define those also. Um, and then, because it's .NET Core and I'm not doing any, like, uh, WPF or anything weird like that, this should work. We do not need it to be on Windows. It could be on Ubuntu. Uh, so first thing, yep, restore the dependencies, build it, um, what's it going to do? Cause I don't have any tests in here right now. Now I could add a test project. But let's let's just go ahead and add this and see what happens.
So we'll create a commit for this. Uh, but I want this to be a pull request in. So we're going to call this Benric uh, initial pH action. Uh, set up minimum action build. So this is the basic, just simple, straightforward build and run tests uh, for our CI. Once that goes, this should start building as soon as I create the pull request into the main branch. There it goes. All right, let's have a look at the details as it runs. <clears throat> yeah! Didn't mean to do that. There we go. So I don't know what it's going to do about the, the test. We can add in a test project just so that it doesn't have a problem with that. Restore dependencies failed. Whoa! That's surprising. Oh, because it's in the wrong folder. It totally is, too. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. <clears throat> so let's fix it this way. I'm going to go to this branch and just go ahead and just edit the file in the branch so dot net restore source uh dot net build source dot net test source we'll do dot backslash source just so we're super clear on that i think that's what it needs to be and i'm just gonna go ahead and commit it Commit directly to that branch. Yep. Uh, fix a uh, folder structure because we put it inside a folder. We didn't. We don't have the solution in the root. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, codebase alpha. You're right. There was a fuel snable command. Are any commands working? Nope. All commands are down. Oh, maybe when the other bot connected, maybe both of them disconnected. Here, I'll restart that bot. Let's see what happens. There it goes. We'll see when it comes back up. Uh, in the pull requests for this one. Ah, it's restoring dependencies again. Project file does not exist. Ah, oh, boo, boo. Oh. Okay. Thanks, thing. Does this work? Yep, looks like it does. Okay, so don't. So basically, what that's telling me is don't get specific. That, or maybe it's the Linux that's bugging me. Ooh, maybe it is the Linux that's bugging me. Maybe that's what's got me here. Either way, let's adjust. Do 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 do. Commit. Uh, fix folder. Uh, scripts, fix, build script. We'll just do that. Todd Strife! Hey, greetings, welcome. Uh, alright, Bot says he's back.
Ah, there we go. See? See? Fuel snibble. Use D4 for that. Excellent. Glad to see the command is back and working as expected. All right, now, hey, hey, it failed on build. That's fine. Got at build source, no restore. Ooh, try 10 p.m. Uh, I'm betting that I didn't define that uh, in there because, uh, let's see. GitHub Actions NPM. Yep. Let's see, what does it want? Yep, runs on that latest, and that should be fine. Ah, here. Uh... Use Node.js. So I think I need one of these in mine. Because I need to tell it that uh, that we that we need Node to be here. And I think that's what's got it uh, messed up right now, is it doesn't, it didn't have Node set up on here. So before we set up .NET, we need to set up uh, node essentially okay so we're gonna say action setup no so with node makes anything else that we need to do with that Build runs on, uh, okay. Specifying the version, set up new version. Each job is switching a new version, reusing the version. Ah, okay. I don't need to set up with exact node versions. If you don't specify, it goes with the default ones. Okay. I So our build process, I think, is going to run the NPM itself when we do our .NET build. So I don't think I need any more than that. Uh, so let's try adding node. Adding node. So this is the reason why it's so nice to basically make like a build branch like this where you're setting it up is, yeah, the build failed, build failed, it's fine, you know, because I'm just changing it here, right? This doesn't change it everywhere for the project. This is just on this spot. So if I bork this, it doesn't matter. It's just in this branch. Um, and then I can rev it and adjust it and just try running it and to see how it does. And I don't need to do like local versions of it because look, how long did it take for this to run the next one? Like it's here and going, so yay. Okay, so restoring dependencies, now it's gonna build. This is where it failed last time. Uh, the operation was canceled. Why was it canceled? Oh, uh, specified task I see little sh could not be run in the working directory public site in that this restoring that so that should be using npm build failed uh, okay good I was just checking to see if my head was covering this and it's not covering most of it so that's fine I guess I could go this way and make sure I'm not covering any of that text Why did it fail to build it though? Directory not found. Client app does not exist. Inside of public site not CS proj. Oh crap! 
Ubuntu. It's Ubuntu. I sw I'm, I'm willing to bet. What do you think? What do you think? Am I right? Am I right? Uh, hang on. I bet I'm right. Hang on. Uh, GitHub, Actions, Windows. Let me just make sure I get the right one. Uh, yeah! Virtual Environments. Uh, Mac OS latest, Windows latest. Okay. All right. Copy pasted. Testing on Windows. Let's confirm my theory. Am I right? You wondering why? Why I think it's Windows versus Linux? Because it works on my machine, but not on the server. So why would Brendan suspect that? We wonder. Well, because uh, I have a folder named client app in lowercase that I created because that's what the view CLI requires because it was like, no, oh, you can't do that. And I'm all like, I can do what I want. Testing on Windows. Here we go. I think we're going to remove all specifications of a uh, of an of uh, a node version on this because we don't need to support multiple versions of node. Peg, we can take whatever it defaults to. Okay. I think it's building because this is taking quote several minutes <laughs> now let's see what does test do it probably says hey I didn't find any test projects okay well that 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 proves it Windows runs just fine Linux not so much which is my own fault uh, because case sensitivity okay so uh, let's cancel this workflow. We don't need it to complete. Uh, let's go back here. We're going to make a couple of other adjustments. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Several minutes is the best amount of time for it to say. It's like, sweet, thanks. OK, uh, so we don't need a whole bunch of those. We only need one version of this. Um, we do not need a specific version. I think we can just say that we need it to set up Node. Um, <clears throat> And, well, uh, get up actions, no, oh well, no versions. Are there like, I'm wondering if there's like some, some big version numbers that we should maybe be erring on. Uh, da, 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 da. No, we'll leave it out. We're just not even going to specify it. Okay, so we'll switch this back to Ubuntu. And commit this. Because uh, we're going to fix the problem which is more complicated than, than I'd like it to be. Uh, okay, so uh, first off, this is going to be... Um, back to Ubuntu. Uh, with default. Uh, oh, whoops. That doesn't go in there. That value is no longer there. Okay. 
tag to Ubuntu, and we'll say default node. So this build is going to fail again. And that's totally fine. We know it's going to fail. Um, it's going to fail back here because uh, we switched this back to Linux. As this is part of the build process, as part of that, I'm going to rename some files. <clears throat> so we're going to go in here. You know, the public site, client app, needs to get a rename if I can. But I may not be able to from here. So, what that says to me is grab this pull request version. We're going to pull it down. So, uh, it's right here. See, this is hilarious. Even in Visual Studio, it says that that's client app with with capital uh, with with uh, Pascal casing here. It's not true, but even Visual but even Visual Studio seems to think that that's the case. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Ooh, it won't let me do it. Hang on. It's not letting me change the file. I think because stuff is running. Hopefully that will get it to stop using. All right. I renamed it to not client app. So if you look, everything changed. You'll notice it's all in not client app. So now you might be wondering, Brendan, why didn't you just change the casing? Now I'm going to fill you all with joy uh, and tell you that Git will not let you change the casing just straight like by just doing it. It doesn't it doesn't take those. So you have to rename it. Uh re rename the client app folder. Okay, now it's renamed. And you know what I'm gonna do now? Now I'm going to rename it back. And this is going to be fix client app casing. So it takes both commits because if all you did was change casing, it's going to claim that nothing happened and it won't actually it like it won't change it everywhere. So like it will it will see that it happened but it won't change it on a machine. So if someone else commits your code, or if someone else has a check out of your code, it will not fix it unless you do this. Now, in our case, we didn't really need to do this because it was going to reset it on the on GitHub Actions. It was going to get fresh copy anyway. But I just wanted to point it out because if you ever run into that problem where you need to fix casing of things in Git, you have to do what I just did, which is like a double rename. <clears throat> rename it to something else and then rename it back. All right, let's check out the build. Uh, running.net, check out. It should be running on Ubuntu, but I did not really confirm that. All right, restore dependencies, let's try building. Because building is where it kicks out, it kicks in node, and uh, that's where it, uh, the client app needs to be there. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I think it might have worked. Yep, there we go. Awesome. Okay, cool. <coughs> uh, yeah, so there, there was a... And, and if you look, file renamed without changes in all of these is what happened. Uh, but because I did it as two separate renames, when it when it actually runs these, it should rename the in the file for someone. Okay, uh, and it is running on Ubuntu. All right, fantastic. Build seems to be working, so let's go ahead and do that. Merge it in. Yay! Excellent. That is two things down. Now we should probably get ourselves a unit test project going. Um, the other things we could actually look at, which we didn't start yet, uh, we could put some actual like end-to-end -end testing on here. 
uh, that actually tries to walk the site and, you know, click on things to make sure they're still working. So, um, chat, I ask you, uh, would you be interested? Like, should I put some actual, like, end-to-end uh, -end tests on here? Stuff that's actually, like, going to spin up a, uh, a Chrome driver or something, click through on things, uh, and try to make that happen? Let me know if, uh, if you think I should. Uh, if not, we can stick with just the, the C-sharp stuff. Uh, if I do that, it'll probably be Nightwatch.js uh, that we use for the end-to-end -end testing. So. Okay. Ah, and that's nice. The main, main branch built, too. You know what? Here, let's put this in here. Uh, let's put an actual description on here. So, game oversight. Um, this is site and extension. Uh, public site and... Uh, Uh, this uh, project, this repository includes the public site for the game oversight uh, project, as well as the API for the Twitch extension, and the uh, and the, we're going to put the Twitch extension itself here too, I think, and the uh, Twitch. Uh, extension itself. Uh, oh, it all works. <laughs> the uh, Twitch extension displays over a Twitch stream allowing viewers to interact with it. Uh, those overlays are spa pages, uh, which uh, let's say communicating with our API uh, to send it commands. Uh, it will uh, talk with the the API uh, will both confirm uh, the request is valid and possible uh, before sending to the streamer's computer when it receives A response from the streamer's computer. We know if the change was successful and can confirm, can uh, can apply changes to the user's account and respond to them. Example, uh, we'll say <coughs> user clicks on, uh, we'll say user uh, selects, uh, so, uh, let's see, um, Something that could f that, that could fail. We should we should uh, we need something that may or may not work depending on the circumstance. Okay, so uh, user uh, attempts to uh, drop a let's say remove a potion from the player's inventory. Um. 
quest. Uh, so this would be like JavaScript uh, post to the API with the user with the chat uh, with the viewers viewers info and their action to take uh api checks their uh feature is enabled we'll say validity uh feature enabled streamer live user has permission we'll say viewer has permission viewer has uh we'll say money for lack of a better term like they have the money to do it for action uh okay so system reserves their money so that's basically like putting a hold <clears throat> is kind of my thought it's a hold to hold on their money uh system uh so yeah we'll say api because it's the api api sends um it's almost like this thing almost acts like the controller or the communicator between them um api sends uh action to the streamer sends action to the streamer's computer um interactive seven attempts to uh what did we try to do remove the potion We'll say if player still has it. Uh, why don't we just say player still has it? Because this is this is an example. So we'll say um, tells server action completed. Uh, we'll say. Uh, API that action is completed. So we'll say active seven tells API that action is completed. Um, API uh, rem removes viewers money. Uh, we'll, uh, spends, uh, uses, allocates, takes away. Uh, forms viewer of action success. Why don't we say all viewers? Because it's going to tell everyone. Maybe they maybe they get like a, a status update of, of hey these things just happened. Okay. I think that's a pretty good description of essentially how this system is supposed to work. Uh adding a you know what? Fenric, read me one. Update readme is a perfectly valid name for this. Okay, now let's let this build actually happen. Uh, because while that's going, I want to do something with this project. Let's go into the branches. We want to protect this branches. Uh, rah, protected branches only available to pro team enterprise users. Meh. Of course, you won't let me do it. Uh, I thought I had a. 
here's where I'm here's where I'm caught. Uh, I have have a pro account. This project is not on my account. It is on the Dev Chatter organization. So that's why I don't have it. <clears throat> well, that's a bummer. I might need to fix that. Either by moving it or uh, by just moving it to mine or seeing if uh, I can get GitHub to uh, bump up the uh, Dev Chatter uh, organization in some capacity be like look we work on open source stuff come on when maybe that maybe they will who knows um but maybe not it doesn't matter how much is a pro account uh not very much it's like just some i think single digit dollars a month or something like that for a pro account it's not expensive Whoops. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Those all gone? Yay, they're all gone. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, excellent. Uh, okay. That should be good. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, hang on one second. Well, I don't see anything, and I don't see any, so uh, I guess with that, I want to do a couple of things. So first off, um, uh, I want to bring up a couple of th things. First off, I want to thank everybody for hanging out today. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm going to wrap up the stream here in a minute. Please don't go anywhere just yet, because um, I want to talk about a couple of things. First off, um, I had a lot of fun starting this project again. Uh, we did a pretty good long stream here, like three hours, 20 minutes or something. No, three hours about, because uh, I started like 20 minutes late. Um, the I'm going to try to get back to my old stream schedule, which means I'll be streaming on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, the astute among you might have noticed I didn't mention Saturdays, which was our old stream schedule. Um, I am going to uh, remove the... Um, Saturday one for now, uh, just for uh, family time, but I am hoping Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays will be my stream schedule. Uh, so on Mondays and Tuesdays, I will stream starting plan is uh, to start about 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so that is what, like uh, 1800 UTC? Uh, and on, which is, if you look at your clock right now, subtract an hour and 20 minutes. That's my start time, uh, at least during the summer. The um, Thursday streams start three hours and 20 minutes before right now. So if you look at your clock, subtract three hours and 20 minutes, that's what time this was supposed to start. It started about three hours ago. But hey, first, first stream back after a while, I'm okay with it only starting 20 minutes late. It could have been much worse than that. Okay, uh, a couple of other uh, points on that one. Uh, oh, uh... You asked a question, what games is Interactive 7 going to control? Uh, so uh, right now, Interactive 7 uh, runs as a program only on a user's computer. We don't have the Twitch extension, so they can type in a chat and it control, controls the game already. Uh, right now, the only one that is actually working is Final Fantasy 7, uh, which is like a 20-year-old game. Uh, we're going to do some other old games as well, um, and probably some different games. But for now, the plan is... Uh, first, Final Fantasy VII. Second is probably going to be Final Fantasy IX. Um, maybe VIII. Uh, people are arguing over that right now. Um, yelling at, at me about stuff, which is fine. They, they, they can. People have preferences. Uh, and no, we're not just going to do Final Fantasy games. Though, uh, I like the idea of, of uh, doing um, 
Chrono Cross, which gets some people saying, oh, you're just doing Square Enix games. And it's like, well, yes, uh, I am going to start with some of those. Uh, but my intention is to get into some other ones as well. Uh, so uh, that being said, maybe we'll let people mess with, I don't know, Skyrim or, you know, other, other modern RPG games. Um, whether we're planning on jumping into action games or anything like that, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Definitely RPGs. Uh, so we could maybe do like... I mean, heck, we could go with Blizzard games potentially too and mess with Diablo or something like that. Uh, they're getting a uh, Diablo 2 remaster coming out at some point. So maybe when that launches, we'll figure out a way of tying into that. I don't know. Um, so... The answer, the the which games is it going to control? I don't know yet. Um, we're going to do some. It will definitely control Final Fantasy VII, and it will very likely control Final Fantasy IX, as those are the ones that I've gotten the most requests for, and I have uh, made some stuff for that. Uh, towards Brutal Swede's question, um, it is possible that what I will do is make some generic things where it's like... Um, where you could run it against a bunch of different games. Um, sure, Path of Exile, uh, you, you'd have to, if, if you can do Diablo, you can do Path of Exile. It'd be the same. So, and and yes, there are probably people that have made Twitch extensions for those things. Uh, I, I don't know the Twitch extensions for those, but if I had to take a guess based on it being an action RPG that's very loot-oriented, my guess would be that it shows a lot of loot and items and, and is mostly about information. Um, whereas, like... We would both need to do that kind of stuff, but then also allow manipulation. Um, uh, so, Brutal Sweet, I don't know enough about what you're talking about, but if there are some, like, I'll say um, almost like game, like if, if, if a game engine's more like a game template where some basic concepts remain the same, like if they all have... Um, you know, the concept of a character and character name and, and um, inventories and, and um, money and other things like that built in. And there's some way that we could look it up and send that to the server and say, like, hey, I'm playing this game. These are the assets for the game uh, and find it out from that. Then, yes, we could make like a, a version of it that m match that game engine or template or something like that. Uh, to answer your question, Brutal Swede, there, we could definitely we could definitely do that. So I, I like the way you're thinking. So, hence why I say, there's cool stuff we could build. Um, so, hence going down this path. Now, I mentioned that at, at the start, like, we're doing the API and just setting up some basic stuff and just wandering through it and talking. Like, today wasn't supposed to be a, hey, dive into the memory, mess with stuff, you know, mess with running programs episode. We've done plenty of those in the past. Uh, Harmony is an awesome library for injecting code into Unity games. Okay, so, uh, in that case, uh, maybe Harmony is actually a thing that we could just leverage and call... Uh, to do some manipulation of Unity games. Cool. Neat. Well, uh, either way, um, I want to thank everybody for showing up and hanging out today. Uh, I want to roll our credits real fast while I'm thinking about it so I don't forget to. Let's see if it... You know, I didn't test the credits before I started. Do they still work? Hey, hey, looks like they still work. All right, well, I want to make sure that I thank everybody for helping out. So Code Base Alpha, Code with Sean, Crimson Green, uh, and Stool Penner, thanks for helping out moderating the channel. Not that that was all that rowdy. Uh, I want to thank these wonderful people who followed our stream, and then these people who are new subscribers to the stream. Some of them are resubs. Some of them were given out as gifts. But either way, I want to thank everyone for coming out, hanging out, and being here today. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect because I haven't streamed in like four months. And uh, before that, it had been a previous four months. So hopefully this one uh, is just, you know, the start of coming back, and we will be back together next Monday. So uh, I apologize, I'm not doing the weekend streams, but I will see you all uh, on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday, hopefully next week. So take care, everyone. Happy coding. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, you don't have to spend it coding. Go out and have some fun. Maybe you're in one of those places where the weather's nice. It's going to get too hot here. So take care, everyone. Bye.